Coming up, Jonathan explores part of the longest submerged cave in the world. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. The jungle of the Yucatan is filled with mysteries and adventure. For miles and miles, it's only trees with no sign of rivers or lakes. But there are rivers. They flow underground through vast cave systems. In a few places, the ceiling of the cave has collapsed, creating cenotes, entrances to the cave systems. In one cenote, called Zapote, we explored unusual formations called cave bells formed by bacteria. But the toxic hydrogen sulfide layer prevented us from going too deep to explore much of the cave. About an hour drive away from Zapote is another cenote. This one will allow us to really explore. Cameraman Todd and I are on an epic adventure to the Yucatan of Mexico. Of course, whenever we go cave diving in the Yucatan, we meet up with our good friend Christine Lowe, an experienced local cave diving instructor who knows all the good spots. And our adventure begins on a nice smooth dirt road into the jungle. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Soon we arrive at Cenote Nahoch. The owners of the Cenote have built a bit of a tourist attraction around it, with an observation tower and some zip lines. But for us, it's all about the diving. Nahoch Nachich, which means giant bird cage, is a cave system that stretches over 42 miles and has 36 different cenotes providing access. Cenote Nahoch is right in the center of the whole thing. And we're definitely not going to see much of this huge system in one dive. But, and we're also going to dive in that direction. Christine walks us through the facilities. Then we review the dive plan. So a little Mayan lesson, Nahoch Nachich means giant bird cage. Stay giant bird cage? How cool is that? However, this is my place, baby! Because there are so many different routes, we have to make a careful plan on where we're going and what is involved. But we can't dive until all the gear is ready. This is a popular place for cave divers, so they have a really nice setup. Finally, the fun part. You gotta get your mask just right because once you put your helmet on, <laughs> you can't really adjust it. Then we follow Christine down into the crystal clear water. As we prepare to leave the cavern zone, where we can see light from the sun, Christine ties off a line. The permanent cave lines start a few hundred feet further into the cave to keep open water divers from following them. So we start with our own line that leads from there back to the cavern zone. Since every dive team places their own line from the main line back out of the cave, each team always knows when there are other divers in the cave. Reaching the main line, Christine ties our team's reel to the line. Then she places a marker called a cookie on the line. That marker has her name on it, so nobody else will take it out by mistake. Oh, 
approach is known as one of the most beautiful caves in the Yucatan with good reason. Everywhere we look, there are gorgeous formations. In some areas, we're very shallow, and the water doesn't completely fill the cave, so there are huge air pockets above our heads. In theory, you could stick your head up in there and have a conversation. However, since these air pockets don't directly connect to the air outside the cave, there's no way of knowing if the air is safe to breathe. But it looks cool, like an upside down puddle above our heads. As we swim weightlessly through these winding passages, it's hard to believe that 15,000 years ago, these passages were dry. Back then, during the last ice age, sea levels were much lower. So the water table in the jungle was lower too. These caves were bone dry. We could have walked through this cave back then. And the evidence is here. Formations hanging from the ceiling, called stalactites, were created by dripping water, almost like icicles of stone. When the dripping water hit the floor of the cave, the result was stalagmites. And as those two formations grow, they can meet in the middle, forming a column. Soon we reach our first jump. We're going to leave the main line and go down a side passage. So we have to make what is called a jump over to another line. The side passages already have permanent lines in them, but they don't connect to the main line because that can be confusing. So we put our own line between them, temporarily. Christine ties a spool to the main line. Then we swim across the jump and tie on to the line on the side passage. When we return, this jump line ensures that we can find the main line again. This is one of the unbreakable rules of cave diving. Never be out of sight of the line that leads all the way to the entrance. Soon we come into an amazing room filled with crazy formations known as helictites. Helictites are thin little whisker-like formations that go sideways off the drip formations. Nobody's quite sure how they form. For a long time, the prevailing theory was that they're formed by wind blowing dripping water sideways. But more recent evidence suggests that surface tension caused by a special kind of bacteria may be the cause. Either way, they grow in a dry cave, not a submerged cave. As we keep going, Christine leads us through very large rooms. The crystal clear water flows beneath the forest, the lifeblood of the Yucatan. And most of the time, we're no deeper than 30 feet. Just above our heads, a thick tropical jungle. While some of the formations are opaque, some of them allow light to pass like a flashlight behind a finger. Our goal is to leave nothing but bubbles and pristine cave behind. A beautiful flowstone formation reminds me of a waterfall, frozen in time, sculpted in stone. A formation like this takes thousands of years to form. Finally, it's time to turn back. Another firm rule of cave diving is that you can only use one third of your air to get into the cave. You use another third to get back. That leaves the last third for unexpected delays. Mm -hmm. 
Soon we get back to the jump and Christine spools up her jump line as we cross back to the main line. The arrows point the way out because obviously following the line in the wrong direction would be disastrous. People think cave divers are nuts, but look at the things we get to see. As we swim back to the entrance, and it's a long swim, I have time to think about how far this cave goes. We swam only a half a mile into a cave which is 42 miles long. But a few years ago, cave explorers linked this cave to another huge system called Sak Aktun. Then they linked Sak Aktun to a system called Dos Ojos. These three systems together are now the longest underwater cave in the world, stretching 215 miles. And with that humbling fact in mind, finally we make it back to the cavern zone where we can see the light from the sun. Fortunately, we never went deeper than 30 feet, so even though our dive was two hours long, we have no decompression to do. Woo! Wow! Man, that, that was, was great. Stunning. What a gorgeous environment that is. <laughs> My lower back is like on fire. I feel incredibly lucky to have visited Nahochna Cheech. Never mind the fact that I can brag about diving the longest known submerged cave in the world. It's just a beautiful cave with crystal clear water, almost no current, and shallow enough to stay for hours. Indeed, a treasure of the blue world. Hey everyone. Have you subscribed to our extras channel, Blue World Plus? It's full of great behind the scenes and additional fun content. Check it out now.